Okay. Um. Got a few for you. Okay. Why are you fat? Why am I fat? Yeah. I'm fat because um, I believe this stuff would make a lot more sense. We talk about karma um, and some residual karma that can be stressed over from our childhood or even from our prior lives. It's because a lot of my lives I've had no food access. So when food becomes available, I would gorge. You still do it. I still do it today, yeah. So, unfortunately, you eat a lot. And then, of course, you're eating, you know, like, like you eat those potato chips and three donuts this evening. So, that was easily about, um, oh, my God, almost a 1,000 calories just right there. Yeah. Okay. So, you're saying is, is because of um, the hard times that you faced in prior lives, you you binge you belt I mean you you just pack it in because it's like you need it's like you think you, you need that so much food to make happiness I think that's another thing too is the happiness because you go into the a situation where you know like I do I gotta deal with everyday life like everybody else does and sometimes I just want to go ahead and enjoy a nice sweet meal to help me forget about my problems uh, I know some people who use alcohol to do this or drugs well I use food yeah, that's true. And, and, and I, yes, I do know people like that. And and they have a hard time because it's it's that, that they're... I don't think they're really particularly in... I don't think they... Yeah, after a while, they got so used to it, they don't really care anymore. But um, I think they were originally using alcohol because it made them feel good, for example, or drugs. So, yeah, I guess I could see why it moved food. I mean, if you... After all, this food is one thing you cannot abstain from. And no food, you're dead. Yeah, you're dead. And um, so trying to say to somebody, that's it, I'm not eating dinner here anymore. You know, I'm no longer having it. I'm no longer eating. I'm no longer going to go to go to a restaurant and or, or cook a dinner or whatever it would be. Uh, suicidal. Yeah. Um, so we have to eat. The problem is, is this, it's not the process of eating. It's, um, I think is more of is that um, we eat a lot because we feel that there's a need to eat a lot. When I was a kid, even in this life, the food was more or less used as the pacifier. You're upset, here, have a bowl of ice cream. You did good in school, here, have a cookie. You did bad in school. Here, have another cookie. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, you don't like the fact that you're being told you got to wear sneakers and shoes or, you know, sneakers and, and men's shorts. Here, have a bag of pretzels. You start to uh, begin the process of using food as a way to make you feel good. I like the last example because I think it really kind of talks about your childhood a little bit in this life. Um, you were kind of, you know, um, your mother told you to drop dead and get AIDS. Yes. Are you? No, because I don't do IV drug use or any kind of drug use. I don't even have sex. That's true, you don't. Um, I, um, I stay to myself and, uh, I'm a clean person. Um, and I, I, I try to stay for these so from that kind of stuff. So my mom's wish would never happen, no matter what. If she said die from, go drop dead from liver disease, um, I would have to say it's a very likely possibility. Um, because I have a dysfunctional liver, and we don't know why it is. could be congenital. It doesn't, we don't, science doesn't, the doctor doesn't know yet. We, we check it every three months. Uh, I'm on prescription medications for my liver. So yeah, I think that my mom has get drop, you know, get sick and drop dead with um, with liver disease. I think she would have gotten her wish. Yeah, but why would she? Why would she want you to drop dead? Well, my mother um, and I did not get along very well. 
Um, especially not when I was, you know, I was getting older. I mean, I was very young, like for second grade. My mother and I were very, you know, especially first kindergarten. I don't know, I mean, first grade was kind of rocky. But, you know, my mother was going through a lot of her own issues in her life. And so there was this, me and my mom had a very close, you know, bond. But as she was kind of wrapping herself up in her own problems with my father and, you know, everyday issues, we kind of drifted away. And um, I think that was the reason why um, I think I just didn't feel loved anymore. Yeah, I, I understand that. But, you know, what was, did your mom actually allow you to be you? Yes, I was allowed to be me. I was allowed to be Michelle Marie. I was who I was. But then after, you know, my mother and my father were facing so many hardships in their life, she started cricking the whip, especially against, you know, uh, me and who I am and, and the way I was. And uh, it really kind of um, made me feel very, really unwanted and unloved. And I think that, again, it's like I said, we said about my other lives. My mother was looking for some kind of release and I was not the kind of release she wanted because, you know, I think she really wanted a girl child and she got stuck with me, a hermaphrodite, and she thought maybe after the way my father and my mother's marriage was, I think she decided to turn her back on me and my dad. And that was one of the reasons why there was a lot of this kind of anger and animosity where she would want to say, when I was 16, go get AIDS and drop dead. It's because I refused to live up to her um, mixed bag of life once. Um, she had, for many years, had been sending a very mixed signals. And um, it was really getting to the point where I was feeling that I wasn't sure, you know, what she really wanted anymore. Well, what did you want? Um, I wanted to be me. I wanted to be myself. I wanted to be who I really was. Um, I knew I was a female spirit. I really just wanted to be a female spirit. I wanted to, you know, be part of the local clique, you know, the, the local girl cliques. Um, I did. I hung out with a lot of girls in school, and I still do today. Um, because the boys just made me feel really uncomfortable, and they still do. Whereas for me, it's the opposite for the most part. Girls kind of make me feel like I need to back away. Um, so, yeah, I see your point. But when you already do kind of back away a little, because, you know, I notice, like, a lot of times lately you have, especially you have been kind of been distancing yourself, especially against... Um, um, the local protagonist. Well, first of all, the local protagonist is a is a male spirit. Okay, in other words, even though she's female in this form, she is a male spirit. Yes. Okay, I noticed that, and she is very, very um, aggressive and really. Um, very dominating and very domineering and I just wanted to keep my way, my distance from her um, and it's kind of a shame because I think that uh, if she wasn't so full of alcohol all the time that maybe she could have been uh, um, I don't know I think I think I still would have backed away because I think she just was a real uh, she was a real loaded cannon I just didn't like her very much yeah, well, I don't either, and I, I think it's 
pretty much for the same reason you said, and then some. It's because when I'm with her, I feel like I'm going to be hurt again. In other words, she's going to, because of her attitude, she's going to be able to walk all over you with cleats. Yeah, and that's the reason why me and this lady keep her distance. And, and I really would rather, you know, um, uh, think about it. You know, we talk about how, if, you know, she makes you uncomfortable. Um, what exactly is your, uh, I'm sure people ask this question a lot, is Lomi is, uh, is really seems to be, when they can see her energy, they see this big, very powerful um, type of masculine entity, um, almost like a, like, a, like a warrior protecting this small little um, female entity behind that person. Um, do you, how do you see yourself in life? I mean, do you see yourself as a, uh, as a warrior, as a defender? Um, you're my spouse. You are, we are joined together as spouse is by mother Asna. And so we are a couple and we are a truly divine couple, but I'm not going to allow anyone to hurt you ever. And if they do, they have to go through me and I will, um, rightfully protect what I feel is a very beautiful person that is being hurt. I will not allow that to happen, but I will not necessarily go out there and lash out at anybody without unless they're being provoked. If I'm being provoked, I am going to show, um, my, my nettle. I will, um, I need to make sure you understand this, Michelle. Remember what Mother Asana said at the, um, coronation. I am your leech. I am your spouse. I love you. I protect you. And I'm not going to let anyone hurt you. I don't care if it's a male or a female entity. I will do everything I can to make sure that you are not harmed physically or emotionally. And like you, I have, I, I also don't want to get myself into a heap of trouble with this lady either. So I choose to back away and and like I suggested, you have been doing is you have been saying the same thing as we're not going to go confront this person. We're going to leave this person to be alone by themselves. Um, let them do their stuff. Don't worry about their baloney because it's not going to matter to us. We have to worry about our own lives and, and try to fix our own lives. Yeah, that's sometimes though it's hard because deep down I really would like to be you know friends with more people but the problem is that some people you just can't be friends with no matter how much you try um, because she's a dark entity I can see her auric energy it is not a happy energy it's very 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 malted it's very it definitely indicates that of the disease that she has is um, the alcoholism the drug addictions the um, the general dis-ease of life is just not a very positive energy. Her aura is clearly discolored. It's not at all good energy flow. Yeah, I noticed that. And you're right. So, you, you tried to talk to her, and she's always constantly trying to shut you down. So I say is it would make sense to keep your distance from that people like that. And that's a suggestion for everybody who actually has to work with these kind of entities. If you see, you may not necessarily be able to see the colors, but you can feel it. If you feel that a person is clearly not at all a positive influence in your life, and you feel an uncomfort and discomfort and dis-ease around that person, then maybe you need to back away. Because sometimes um, these negative entities, 
um, really are out there um, to cause discomfort. That's their job. That's why um, but we are allowed to run into them um, because as free, as free spirits, we have to be able to, um, you know, associate with what we feel comfortable with. And if allowed to be um, truly uh, free entities, we have to be willing to make painful mistakes and also not so painful mistakes. <laughs>